All right, the next topic is biogeochemical cycles. At first, when you look at this term biogeochemical, it sounds very hi-fi and fancy. But if you break the word biogeochemical, it's nothing but the chemical exchange between living organism, that is where the bioterms come from, and the geographic element of the earth, such as rocks, soil, air, and water. So in simple terms, it is a cycle that shows us the movement of chemical elements between biotic and abiotic components of the environment. If I have to explain with an example, what are the essential chemicals that are present in the environment that determines life on earth? Can you think of them? Water, H2O. It is important, right? Then we have carbon. Then we have nitrogen. Another one is phosphorus. There are many more, but these are some important chemicals. Now look at your body. You have DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. It contains nitrogen molecules. Then your body needs amino acids, which are essential nutrients for the body to function. And amino acids contain carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, etc. Your bones contain phosphorus. If you look at carbon, it is the basic building block to most cells in the body. It helps with cellular respiration, by which your body releases energy stored in glucose and glucose compound is composed of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. You see, these are essential chemicals for life. Now, these same chemicals are also found in rocks, soil, air and water. But it doesn't mean that you start eating rocks and soil directly to have these chemicals in your body. Rather, these chemicals from the environment goes through a process and turns into food. We have talked about this when we read about the structure of the ecosystem, how one organism eats another for food and energy. That's how energy gets transferred from one form to another. While some of the energy gets lost in the process, but essentially these important chemicals get recycled. And if you see, most of these chemicals were present during the initial time when the earth was formed. That's why we call them as life essential chemicals. Anyhow, these chemicals go through a process and turn into food, which you are able to consume and that's how your body is able to function and have these chemicals replenished within you. After you die, all these chemicals are returned to the air, water and soil through decomposition. So this entire cyclic movement of chemicals between the abiotic and biotic components of our environment is referred to as biogeochemical cycle. Now that you have understood what a biogeochemical cycle is, you now have to understand that it is basically of two types. The reason I say it is of two types is because if you look at the important life-forming vital chemical elements of our environment, I'm talking about carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, calcium, potassium, etc. They can be easily segregated in the form of solid and gaseous form. For example, carbon. As carbon dioxide, then hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen are basically gas. And phosphorus, sulfur, calcium, potassium are found in sedimentary and igneous rocks. It is due to this classification Biogeochemical cycles are of two types, the gaseous and the sedimentary cycle. Now if you look at the gaseous cycle, obviously the elements are in gaseous form. But there are some combination of these elements such as hydrogen and oxygen that goes on to become water. That means the gaseous cycle has both the gaseous phase as well as the water phase. After all, evaporation converts water into water vapor which is liquid to gaseous state. Therefore, the whole point is that the life-forming chemical materials that go back in the environment from water to gaseous form is through the gaseous cycle. Likewise, if you look at the sedimentary cycle, the main components are soil and rocks, which are basically part of Earth's crust. So all the life-forming chemical materials that go back in the environment from soil and rocks is through the sedimentary cycle.